all these titles have in common? They are all classic folk tales. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, good afternoon. Folk tales, fairy tales, and legends have been around for years in almost every part of the world. Today I'm going to share with you two contemporary folk tales. Now we all have our favorites, but these are going to hopefully show you what it's like to lose something physically and what it's like to lose something mentally or emotionally. Most stories at the very end tell some sort of tale. Usually there is a lesson or a moral of the story to be learned. And that is definitely true in my first story entitled, The Three Hairs. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Pat. Unfortunately, Pat suffers from cancer. To battle this deadly disease, Pat has decided to undertake chemotherapy. As a result of the chemotherapy, Pat started to lose her hair. But she's a positive person. So one morning, Pat went in and looked in the mirror, and she only had three hairs on her head. And she said, hmm, today I think I'll braid my hair. <laughs> She braided her hair, she went out, and she had a wonderful day. The next morning she looked in the mirror and she only had two hairs on her head. She said to herself, you know what, today I think I'll part my hair down the middle. <laughs> she did, she went out and she had herself a grand day. The next morning Pat looked in the mirror and she only had one hair on her head. And she said to herself, you know what, today is a good day to wear my hair in a ponytail. She did and she went out and she had an excellent day. Finally, the next morning, Pat walked into the mirror. She stared at it, and she looked at it for a moment. You see, Pat had no hairs on her head. She was actually bald. So she stared for a moment, and all of a sudden, like a volcano, she erupted. She goes, Woohoo! Yeah, baby, no more hair! I don't have to fix my hair anymore. And she went out, got dressed, went out, and had a fantastic day. The moral of this story? Attitude is everything. Sometimes it's the only thing. So, if you want to go out into this world, think of all the things that you can say to people and do to people. But what I suggest you do is, when you are talking to people, think about their situation and Pat's situation. Because after all, isn't everybody fighting some kind of battle? My second story takes place at the airport. As you may remember, many years ago, when you dropped somebody off at the airport, you were actually allowed to go right up to the gate and say goodbye to them. But because of today's continuous uh, situation, that is no longer allowed. But at that time, when you did say goodbye to somebody, it's kind of hard, especially if it's a loved one, which has to do with my next story, someone saying goodbye. This story is entitled... This story is entitled... I wish you enough. Once upon a time, and not too distant past, I was at the airport. I went to my gate and sat right near the window. And right next to me I could see a mother and daughter saying goodbye to each other. And the mother hugged her daughter intently and said, I love you, and I wish you enough. The daughter, in turn, looked deeply into her mother's eyes and said, You are all that I ever needed. My life with you has been full. I love you, Mom, and I wish you were not. The two then hugged and kissed one more time, and the daughter disappeared onto the plane. The woman then stepped over to the window. I could see that she needed to cry. She wanted to cry, but I tried not to intrude. And all of a sudden, she turned towards me and she said, Have you ever said goodbye to somebody, knowing it would be the last time you would ever see them? I said, yes, I have. Excuse me for asking, but why is this the last time? She said, I am old. I have many challenges in front of me. My daughter lives on the other side of the planet. And the fact is, the next time she comes to see me will be at my funeral. I said, excuse me one more time. I couldn't help overhearing you say, I wish you enough. Would you mind explaining that to me? Then all of a sudden, a smile seemed to come to her face. And the longer she thought about it, her whole body seemed to fill with a giant smile. And she said, I wish you enough is a saying that's been in my family for years. My parents used to say it to us all the time and to all their friends. When we say, I wish you enough, we are wishing the person that we are speaking to 
would go out into the world and be filled with just enough good things to help sustain their life. Then she turned and walked over to the window, and she started to repeat these words. I wish you enough sun so that your attitude may be bright. I wish you enough rain so that you might appreciate the sun more. I wish you enough happiness so that your spirit may come alive. I wish you enough pain so that the smallest joys in life will appear much bigger. I wish you enough gain to satisfy your wanting. I wish you enough loss so that you can appreciate all that you possess. And I wish you enough hellos so when the final goodbyes come, someone will be next to you. She then began to cry. She turned and walked away. They say that it takes a minute to meet somebody special. It takes an hour to appreciate them. It takes a day to love them, but it takes a lifetime to forget them. As this new year is upon us, I suggest you go out, fall in love with your family and friends, and be and live every day to its fullest. To all of my friends and to my fellow Toastmasters, I wish you enough. And David. Today, David's story, two stories. His assignment was to tell us a story and have a surprise twist at the end. David started out very strongly going with the um, fairy tales the stories that we all know that we're very familiar with, and I wasn't sure where you were going to take that, but what you did is you gave us a twist. You took us into the present where we could relate to somebody who we know has had cancer, who has gone through chemotherapy, and you took that and you, you made it real. You made us able to relate to Pat, because we've seen the people, I have personally working with breast cancer people, where they don't have the hairs on their head and you feel for them. And yet, the twist of the story was the attitude. You brought it in there, and that was excellent because we could relate to this young woman's attitude towards cancer and chemotherapy and everything that she was going through was positive. So you accomplished what you were looking for in that. In the second story, you took us to the airport where I just recently dropped off my family and I tried very hard not to cry because I don't know when I'll get to see them again. So I was able to relate to that. But they're not old and they're still young, like I am myself. So I hope to see them again. <laughs> and the, the ending of the story was also kind of a, a twist because you brought so many of us into the story and you were able to make us feel. You, you almost brought to the tears, which was part of your assignment, was to create the emotions. And we could feel the heartbreak. We could feel the joy. Your voice variation was fairly good. The only thing I, I think you might want to add is once in a while, soften your voice so people can really want to hear what you're saying when you're talking about someone softly. And then when you need to speak out, You've got the voice for it. Your voice is strong, people can hear it, and you can feel it. So you do extremely well, and that's very minor. But many times when we have a tendency to only go up, but the power of silence and the power of softness can be just as powerful as your strength. Overall, you, you created a story for us. You gave us two great stories. We were able to be pulled into them. We understood where you were going. You gave us that interesting twist. Maybe you might have brought back the fairy tale to reality in your ending, but I still like the ending where you closed and said, uh, I wish you all enough. So we knew it was over, and we knew what to expect. Very good. Thank you.